Welcome to 2020, January 1st, it's a new year. Today I wanna to talk about underdogs and I wanna talk about David. David was an underdog his whole life. We only see him as you know slaying the giant, becoming king of Israel. You just see his success. But if you read 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, you'll see the struggle that he went through. His whole life he was an underdog. He was chosen eighth out of all seven brothers. That means his father lined up all his brothers in a row for uh, Samuel the prophet to come and anoint. And they didn't even consider David. David was left out tending the sheep out in the field. And Samuel, he walks up in there and he's looking at his brother and he sees Eliab. And he says, surely, God, this is the one you want me to anoint. And I love this in 1 Samuel 16, uh, 6 or 7. He said, but the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. So many times we think that these people who are popular or who have all the success, so to speak, that, you know, God's with them. Sometimes God has rejected them. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Isn't that amazing? So Jesse, he calls for his son to come in because Samuel's like, is there any more sons? And then he sees him and then he anoints David at a very, very young age. Um, he was smaller than everybody. He didn't look like your prototypical king. His brothers did, but he didn't. So many times we overlook people based on their size or their stature or their economic status. Um, I love what 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 28 says, says, Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you are wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Isn't that something? Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. Wow. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. 1 Corinthians 1, 26-28. I wonder how many times we walk past people that this world's rejected or this world has ostracized from society and said, you know what, they're not good enough. They can't do anything at all anyways. God chooses those people. He uses the weak things of the world to put to shame the wise. I love that because it gives me so much hope. My whole life I've been an underdog. Like I said, I shared a little bit of my testimony in recent videos, and I was bullied most of my extent through school. And like I said, it led to a lot of insecurity. I, no, no matter what, I never really fit in anywhere. Um, I would always try to. I would always be chameleon. I would try to blend in because I live for people's acceptance. But when you live for people's acceptance, you'll die from their rejection. Live for God's acceptance. It's so much more fuller. He's just opening his hands and saying, come here. I want to love you. I want to bless you. I want to help you. I want to make you better. People are fickle. They'll love you one minute. They'll hate you the second. You let God's love change you. You won't be like that. Anyways, I guess my message is, is that God's for the underdog. He's for you. I don't know what kind of background you came from, but typically God uses those people who've been, like I said, rejected from society or everybody in society views you as insignificant or poor or lower or ugly or smelly. God uses those people to bless and to anoint the kingdom of God throughout the world. God's for the underdog. God's for you when you allow him into your heart. Don't let your pride hold you back from accepting Christ. So many times people let their popularity and their money become the God of their life. And so they're like, well, I don't need God because I got money, I got popularity, I got friends. Those people who are hurting right now, who are broken, when you turn to God and you said, use me, I'm hungry, then God pours out his anointing and he pours out his blessing. I love you. Start the new year off right. Start it with God. No matter what season you're going through, I'm going through a season of of hard financial time but I know God's gonna bless me and my family and take care of us in this hard time every significant person in the Bible went through a season of testing don't run from your test accept them walk through them have faith today be encouraged 
I love y'all. God bless you.